A little over a year ago, I took my Neo Geo out of storage after 20 years. I cleaned it up, fixed an issue I had with it not playing games, and I eventually got to play the games I owned since high school. One of the things I wanted to do after reviving the Neo Geo was to build a custom arcade stick, but I didn't really have the time. Then I thought to myself, I have this mini arcade cabinet meant for tablets, which I'm not using. I can probably do something with this. It originally used Bluetooth, but had converted it to use USB instead to reduce controller latency for Raspberry Pi gaming. So I decided to use the mini cabinet to build a prototype controller and learn the process of creating an arcade stick to eventually in the future, build a better quality one with better parts. Now keep in mind that I'm no expert. It's a project I'm doing to learn. But if you have any advice after watching my video, please let me know in the comments. I would love to know anything I can do better for when I actually create the real controller. To start everything off, I need to do some research. So to know what I was working with, I unscrewed the cabinet until I just had the joystick base. I also unscrewed the joystick base to see the wiring inside. Then I started inspecting the connectors on the arcade stick and buttons. On each button and stick direction, there are three connectors with one not being used. I needed to figure out which one is ground and which one is for the button action. I obtained a really good image to define this for me from Koenigs.dk. It tells me that the connector that is labeled C is the common ground connector. The connector labeled NO, meaning normally open, is what's used for the button action. The website also had a wiring diagram that helped me visualize just how things needed to be wired. After looking at the wiring, it was time to get the parts I needed. I ordered this DB15 adapter from Amazon that will help me plug the arcade stick into the Neo Geo. I will also need some wires for each of the controller inputs to plug them into the appropriate pins on the DB15 adapter. Then I will connect the DB15 adapter to the Neo Geo, but I will need an extension cable for that. Luckily, I have an extension cable from another project I worked on that let me attach a Sega Genesis controller to a Neo Geo. For the arcade wires, I'm hoping I can use the wires that I already have from the USB adapter, but I saw an issue. For the USB adapter, I saw that the ground wires were not daisy chained and each button port had both ground and the normally open wires connected to the same port. I need a single wire that is daisy chained across all the ground connectors on the joystick and buttons. Then that daisy chain has to be plugged to one port on the DB15 connector. And the diagram I showed you earlier illustrates the daisy chain going to a single ground connector instead of multiple ground cables going into multiple ports like what was on the USB adapter. So I went on Amazon and bought a set of daisy chain wires to use for ground and also got some more arcade wires to use on the normally open connector. With this new order, I should have all the parts I need to accomplish this project. With all the parts I needed ready, it's time for me to remove the wires of the current USB encoder from the controller. Some of the buttons can be detached by hand, but with most of them, I had to use needle nose pliers to get them out. After getting the button wires out, I'll move on to the joystick wires. The wires on them were actually soldered, so I couldn't just pull them out by hand or with pliers. I needed to get my soldering equipment for these. I also needed to create more space to be able to get to two of the soldered cables. Removing two buttons from the controller helped with that. Now it's time to start the desoldering process. After I'm done desoldering, I'll clean up any extra solder on the connectors by using some desoldering braid. And I'm done with getting all of the USB adapters cables off. 
The next step is to connect these daisy chain cables to each ground connector on the controller. However, I had to manually create the daisy chain. Before I create the ground daisy chain, let me just show you how I want the buttons to be arranged. You can see that there's a lot more buttons here than the Neo Geo needs. I'm still going to wire all the buttons because eventually I want to create an adapter that will take a DB15 connector and convert it to USB. So I would be able to use this controller on my Neo Geo, PC, or Mr. FPGA. But I'm going to make sure that the bottom four buttons are used for the Neo Geo's A, B, C, and D buttons. And the two buttons on the top left will be the Neo Geo select and start buttons. The rest of the buttons will be wired for other button actions that the Neo Geo will ignore, but games on PC like Street Fighter 2 will make use of. I'm not worried how the button arrangement will affect PC gaming because I can always remap the buttons on PC. This will primarily be a Neo Geo controller. So now onto the ground daisy chain. When I purchased the wires for ground, I had thought that either the wires would already be attached to each other or that I would be able to easily attach them together. This was not the case at all. What I had to do was to cut off the ends of each cable and attach them to each other manually. For example, here's a cable with one end I stripped off and now I'm removing one end of another cable. This wire stripper I currently have is really bad and made this process more difficult than it should have been. So after stripping off the wires from two cables, I would tie them together to create a link in the chain. And make sure to wrap the link with electrical tape. I have to create a chain of 12 connectors for the 12 actions on the controller. Also, there has to be an extra final link in the chain that will go into the DB15 adapter. So now, I'll just continue until I have the full daisy chain ready. So here's the final chain. I have 12 connectors that will go to the buttons and joystick on the controller and one final strip wire that will go to the DB15 connector. I'll now take the time to attach this ground daisy chain to the controller. I'm done. The next step is to prepare the wires for the normally open connectors. Here are the cables I'm going to use. Each is a pair connected to a plug. I only need one of the wires in the pair. So I cut off one wire off each plug until I have 12 solo wires. Each of these wires are going to be attached to one of the ports on this adapter. Also, ground is going to be attached to a port too. The wires need to be in specific port numbers in order for controller actions to be recognized properly. On the wires I just cut off, I need to strip them so they can be inserted into the DB15 adapter. Unfortunately, these wires seem to be made out of a different material than the ground wires I use and seem to be much more difficult to strip. I'm definitely going to need a better wire stripper for these. So after purchasing a better wire stripper from my local hardware store, I continued on with the project. The new wire stripper made a huge difference and things were much easier. So after stripping all the normally open wires, the next step is to plug them into the controller. I'll refer to the image I showed earlier to remember which connector they go into. Once I have all those plugged in, it will be time to attach all the cables to the DB15 adapter and I'll be super close to actually finishing the controller. Before I start attaching cables to the DB15 adapter, I'm going to need to know what port on the adapter represents what button action. I first referenced a pinout I created for a Super NES controller I modded to work on a Neo Geo, but this only uses four action buttons, 
which is all the Neo Geo needs. But I also want to wire the rest of the buttons on the arcade stick. Then I found this other image on the Atari Age forums, which had everything I needed to know about the pinout. So I'll match each of the numbers and button action on the image to the numbers on the DB15 adapter. On the controller, I'll use the bottom four buttons to match the A, B, C, and D buttons on the Neo Geo. So according to the chart, button A, which is also button one, is pin 13. So I'll get the wire for button A and insert the end of it to pin 13 on the DB15 adapter. And I'll keep doing the same to all the other buttons and directions. I'm done. The directional joystick was a bit confusing to figure out, so hopefully I wired it correctly. I guess we're about to find out. Obviously, this DB15 plug is not going to reach my Neo Geo, so I'll just use the extension cable to fix that. Then put the controller back in its housing. I seem to have trouble closing it completely. It looks like the DB15 adapter prevents the enclosure from fully closing. Since this is a temporary project, I don't mind that it doesn't fully close. I'll test it out as is. So the moment of truth. Here I have my Neo Geo with Samurai Showdown. I'll plug in the joystick and turn on the system. It boots up. I actually ended up wiring the top two right buttons as start and select instead of the top two left buttons. Oh no, I wired the directions incorrectly. I'll have to fix that. But at least I know things are working. Let's see how everything is wired. Left is down. Right is jump. Up direction on the joystick moves me left. And the down direction is moving me right. I'll test the buttons. And they do what they're supposed to. These do nothing. And this is pause. So things are working. I just have to fix the joystick directions. I'll do that right now. Okay, going to try again. And the directions are fine now. Everything is all set up, so I'll just play some games now. A big issue with the controller right now is that it is not weighted and there are no rubber feet at the bottom to help keep it in place. So the controller keeps moving around while I'm using it. But this was a really fun project. I just have to now source some good quality parts for the actual joystick I want to build. If you have any suggestions on what parts to get or what I can do better on the real build, please let me know in the comments. Anyway, I'll end this video by playing some other games. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And if you want to see more content like this, hit the subscribe button and its bell icon so you can get notified of future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll speak to you next time.